I'm following in the footsteps of the original tourists, the upper-class young lads of the 18th century who embarked on a gap year tradition like no other, the Grand Tour. In our last episode, I discovered what these English lads really thought of Paris. A filthy hole. I survived wolf attacks and frostbite, all to get to one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Or so I thought. <clears throat> Of all the towns in Italy, I am the least satisfied with Venice. Old and ill-built houses and stinking ditches dignified with the pompous denomination of canals, a fine bridge spoilt by two rows of houses on it, and a large square decorated with the worst architecture I ever yet saw. Don't know what he was looking at. After weeks, if not months, of trekking across the continent and over the Swiss Alps, the 18th century grand tourists finally reached the holy grail of their itinerary, Italy. But when grand tourists finally reached Italy, they were horrified by what they saw. What shocked them so much about Italy, you ask? Was it the stunning architecture, the treasures of history? No, they were shocked to see Genoese and Venetian women openly conducting romantic affairs with one or more men who weren't their husbands. These young men were called chichisbe, and according to one 18th century writer, their duties were to receive her ladyship's daily instructions, run up and down the town upon her errands, carry compliments and how to use, and execute her commands with the most religious exactitude. Not only did these ladies' husbands know about these sanctioned lovers, but they often actively encouraged them. And just in case they didn't, some Venetian women even had it written into their marriage contracts that they would be allowed to keep one or more to Chisbe during their marriage. This setup came about for a couple of practical reasons. Firstly, back in the 17th and 18th centuries, noble women needed to have a chaperone when they left the house, and so a chichisbeo helped these women exercise a bit more freedom in their day-to-day -day lives. And secondly, because it was only the eldest son in the family who inherited all the money and property, a practice known as primogeniture, there were a lot of young gents floating about who needed a job. This open and legal arrangement horrified the English gents who visited Venice as part of their grand tours of Europe. Mostly because they were worried that English women would go traveling and come back with ideas. Here's what the same travel writer from before had to say about this issue. I'm apt to think that our northern husbands would knit their brows and be a little uneasy if their wives assumed half the liberty that the Genoese ladies look upon as their right. Our ladies have had the pleasure hitherto to think themselves privileged in England, but it's well if some of our female travellers don't hereafter bring home contraband notions and help to stir up a matrimonial war in the nation to the disturbance of many of His Majesty's good subjects. And to prevent this disorder, I would have every wife that has been abroad be obliged to renew her original act of allegiance and duty to her husband as soon as she ever lands at Dover or any other part of the kingdom. How's that for passport control? This moral panic about the Tichis Bay was pretty hypocritical though, if you ask me, considering what the English gents loved to get up to while they were in cities like Venice. Because one of the biggest tourist draw cards of the city on the swamp were Venice's sex workers. The English writer and pioneer of the Grand Tour, Thomas Coyret, wrote, There were 2,000 courtesans in the city, whereof many are esteemed so loose that they are said to open their quiver to every arrow. He probably embellished those numbers a bit, but it's certainly true that Venice became so well known for parties and sex that a big fear for mums and dads back home was that their son would come back from his grand tour with a sexually transmitted disease. Or worse, a gold digging new wife. Next time on my grand tour, Americans. It's hot as balls and absolutely packed full of tourists. Look what a great time I'm having in Rome, mum.